Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Heard on the radio this week that a bunch of experts, and I assume they were experts, did a study, very, very extensive study, thousands of people over a period of years about what was the most important thing for life satisfaction. So you think about it. What's the most important thing to be satisfied in your life? So they surveyed a bunch of people, asked a lot of questions, years of study. They found out that it was not financial stability. It wasn't financial wealth. It wasn't career choice. It wasn't the careers people were. You know what the most important thing for all people across all walks of life, regardless of age, ethnicity, didn't matter. You know what the most important thing for life satisfaction was? Quality relationships. Quality relationships. You know when I heard that, and I, this wasn't a biblical, it wasn't a church study, it wasn't anything to do with Christianity, but when I heard that I thought, well that makes complete sense. Because that's what the Bible <coughs> tells us. So logically and biblically, that's true because if you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it teaches us what? We need to have, and we're made, we are created to have a relationship with our Creator, with our God, with our Heavenly Father. And also, we are meant to be in community, or communion with one another. Relating to God, and relating to me. Relationships are vitally vitally important to every one of us. Everyone. And especially our relationship with God. Now, you know, looking around at your faces, I know all of you, most of you here this morning, and I know, I believe that, as far as I know, all of you profess that you have a relationship with your Creator through His Son, Jesus Christ. But you know and you understand that's the only way. The only way you can relate to your Creator is through <coughs> faith in Jesus Christ. You understand? But sometimes we wonder, sometimes we struggle with a little bit like, well, how do I know I'm in a right relationship and relating well to God? How can I know? What we learn here in Luke chapter 18, what Jesus will teach us, is that our relationship with God, our Father, there's great evidence and result of that is how good that relationship is to how we relate to other people. So how we relate to others gives great evidence of how we're relating to God. That's what Jesus is going to teach us. So let's stand in honor of the reading of God's Word in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. And of course, in verses 10 through 14, every word is the word of Jesus Christ. But let's look at verse 9. Also, he spoke, Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So Jesus spoke parables. You ready? Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to be a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 
Well, Lord Jesus, you spoke these words. Well, I've wrestled with them for well over a week. Holy Spirit, you've convicted me. I know you will convict some of your people. Who are the others? Father, oh Holy Father, we want to relate to you right. We want to have a right relationship. And if we do, we'll relate to others differently. Teach us the contrast between the Pharisee and the tax collector. For the Lord Jesus, your parable is so relevant. Across the centuries, across the millennia, Lord, your, your, your word is true. And it cuts right to our hearts. So, Lord, please be merciful to us. Teach us your word. And let us enjoy and have peace about our communion, our relation with you and with one another. And Lord, with all people. And we pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see you. I want you to think about this for just a moment. That you are hearing Jesus speak this parable and you just hear verse 10. And you're a Jew. Rich Rawlings, 2,000 years ago. And you just hear him say, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. That's all you hear. You know what you'd be thinking? The Pharisees got it. The Pharisees are going to be praying right. The tax collector shouldn't even be in the temple. Boy, this is going to be good. Jesus is going to destroy this tax collector. Because remember, Jesus' original audience, we, we, we see the Pharisees in a bad light because we, we, we read in, four, in the four Gospels where Jesus just rips rips their self-righteousness apart again and again and again. So we, we see, remember the people, the common people, they held the Pharisees in, in pretty high esteem. They did. The Pharisees had, had a right relationship with God. The Pharisees knew the law. The Pharisees were righteous. The Pharisees, wow, they're up here. We're, we're somewhere back here. That's the way the, the, the people who originally heard this, that's what they would have thought. <coughs> Two men went up to the temple to do what? Pray. Right. Hey, why, why, why do people pray? Why do you pray? Because you want to talk to God. Right? We pray because we, we need to talk to God. And God needs to talk to us. So we pray. Do you have to have a relationship? Yeah. You gotta be, when you pray, you relate to God. Hey, these two men, they went up to the temple because they had a purpose to go up to the temple. They had a purpose to do what? To pray. They were relating to God. And one, he was a Pharisee. The other, tax Verse 11. The Pharisee said, and he prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, could you even imagine him maybe averting his eyes and turning his head just a little bit to look at the tax collector who was maybe standing 50, 100 feet away and saying, or even as this tax collector, even as this tax collector, I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. What do you see in this Pharisee's heart? Point number one, he's relating to God and self-righteousness. You can relate to God in self-righteousness. Now hear me. 
It's not the correct way to relate to God, but unfortunately it's the way that some people do. And this is what the Pharisee was doing. He was relating to God in his self-righteousness. And you can bet when he stood up, he stood in a very prominent place. We know this because in Matthew chapter 5, don't turn there, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6, Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, hey, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. He's talking about the Pharisees. Don't be like them, for they love to pray in the synagogues and on street corners and prominent places so that they may be heard by men. You bet the Pharisee stood up and he took his rightful place in the temple. And he stood up in a prominent place. And, and many of his contemporaries and many of his fellow Pharisees and, and, and the other Jews were looking at him and thinking, Oh, I would love to know what he's praying. I know it's beautiful. What was it? <laughs> Did you notice verse 11 about what Jesus said? Look at verse 11. The Pharisee stood and he prayed thus with himself. <laughs> Catch that. Jesus said he prayed thus with himself. He was so self-absorbed, so wrapped up in his own righteousness, he was praying with himself. He wasn't praying with who? With God. Praying with himself. Oh, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Oh. These other people. These deplorables. That's right. Hillary Clinton wasn't the first one you had. I know what y'all were thinking. She was not the first. She won't be the last. Some 2,000 years ago. Hey, that basket of them. I'm, I'm glad I'm not like those other those others, those deplorable, or even like this, this tax. Because I know, I know he's got to be, I know he's got to be wicked, I know he's got to be unrighteous, I know he can't, because he's a tax collector. I don't know the man, but I know that type of thing. How many times did he use the word I in those two verses, in his prayer? Did y'all count that? I counted how many? Did I, did I get that right? Keep counting. <laughs> I don't think I'm wrong, Bill. Well, I'm right. right. I'll be embarrassed. I, I think I think I got five. Now let's see. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I Gives tithe, give tithes of all that I possess. Five times. Well, I'm glad to do it. That's close. You know, three, like if it's three times, I'm really going to be embarrassed. <laughs> three times would have been bad enough, but five times. No wonder that, that Jesus said he was praying with himself. Ah, 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 I possess it. Ah. <laughs> so, so. Why did Jesus speak this parable? Look at verse 9, remember? Luke tells us. He spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. That they were righteous. And they what? Despised. They despised. They held other people in complete contempt. They despised. The Pharisee despised everybody else. Themselves. He was living. He was relating to God in his self-righteousness. And as I was studying these verses, like I said, I've been struggling with this for over a week. What the Holy Spirit kept bringing to my mind and my heart again and again and again, and I want you to think about this, I want you to pray about this, I want you to struggle with this too. Who are our <coughs> others? Who's the others that we see? That we are tempted. Now, I, notice I said tempted. That we are tempted. We are tempted to view them. We are tempted to view them and despise them. Because they're not us. Who are they? 
Who are they? I struggle with that. I wrestle. And I know, I know who my others are. And I didn't discover it in just a minute. And I'm not expecting you to. I'm asking you. Take this question with you today. And be praying about it through the week. And say, oh Lord, please reveal to me. Who are the others that I'm tempted? I'm tempted to despise and hold in complete contempt. Who are they? Who are they? Are they people I don't, I've never even met? Are, are, are they people of a different ethnicity? A different skin color? Or are, are, are they people with a, a, a different political background or sway or from a different region of the country or that hold different values? Who are they? Are they, are they somebody within my own family? Are they somebody, Lord, that I know really well? Who are they? Because this is something that you know, we have to learn from the tax collector. If we have a right relationship with God, we will not hold others in contempt and despise. We won't. Because look at the tax collector. Verse 13, just one verse. And the tax collector. He was standing afar off. He would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast said, God, be merciful, merciful to me, a sinner. You know, the tax collector, he related to God, point number two, fill this in, in humility. The Pharisee related to God in his self-righteousness. It doesn't work. He wasn't relating to God at all. He was relating with himself. He was praying with himself. The Pharisee <coughs> had all can't relate to God in your self-righteousness. God has no tolerance for self-righteousness. But the tax bill, how is he related to God? In humility. I want you to look at verse 13 very carefully. Look at this. He stood afar off. You said, what's the significance of that? He was standing afar off. In other words, what Jesus conveyed here is in the temple, the tax collector did not feel that he was worthy to stand with other worshipers. He stood afar off. He stood in the back of the temple, perhaps, far away. People, now, now, now please don't take it. Man, this is, how, this is how churches can really get messed up. I'm not saying that it's best if you sit in the back row. <laughs> Those of you here sitting in the back row, please don't think of me. Please. Like I said, this things can get twisted around. Well, the preacher said the tax collector stood far off, so I think I need to stand far off because, you know, I need to humble myself and I'm not going to feel worthy to be up here up front. No, 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 no. no. What Jesus conveyed is, is, is the heart. The tax collector did not feel worthy Worthy to even be around others. He was he had humbled himself. He esteemed Philippians chapter 2. He, he, he esteemed others as better than himself. You see that? Pharisee, he stood up in a proud place. His rightful place. But the tax collector stood <coughs> far off. And also note this. He exhibited reverence, remorse, <coughs> conviction, and repentance. You see, where, where do you see reverence? reverence? He would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. He wouldn't even raise his eyes because he revered God and he understood the holiness of God and he understood the perfection of God and he understood his sin. He wouldn't even raise his eyes to heaven. He looked down at his feet, down at the stones of the temple. He wouldn't even raise his eyes. He exhibited, he exhibited reverence. Also, remorse. You see remorse there? But he beat his breast. So what in the world was that? 
Hey, when Jews beat their breast, what were they doing? Remorse, anguish. Remorse and anguish and regret. He beat his breast in remorse and anguish and regret for the sins that he had committed. As he looked down at the floor, he wouldn't even raise his eyes to heaven. You see the remorse. You also see conviction. Lord, oh God, be merciful. Be merciful. When was the last time in your prayers that you cried out to God for mercy? Oh Lord, be merciful to me. Did you hear it in, in my prayer? The Holy Spirit brought this to my mind. Without your mercies, without God's mercies, we would all be consumed. When we pray, we need to pray and ask God, please be merciful to me because God is a God of mercy. We need to cry. Oh Lord, be merciful to me. And where do you see repentance? What's the last two words he uttered? I see. It. I see. It. Oh Lord, oh God, be merciful to me. I, see it. I need your forgiveness. And Jesus said, look at verse 14, I tell you, this man, this, this, this tax collector, believe it or not, this tax collector went down to his house justified rather than the other. Oh, we cannot understand how bad that shook up the audience that Jesus spoke this parable to. We cannot begin to comprehend how it troubled them and how it amazed. What? Not the tax collector. Tax collectors were evil people. They were traitors to the Jews. They were, they were on the side of the Romans. They were thieves. They, they, they were extortioners. Not the tax collector. He cut the one away. The Pharisee did not. You know why? Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. God is not mocked. Jesus is not mocked. What did he say? Everyone, no exceptions, who exalts themselves will be humble. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Exalted. Exalted in the eyes of God. Question for you. I just thought about it. I want you to answer it honestly. Do you care more about what people think or about what God thinks of you? Do you care more about what people think of you or what God thinks? Yeah, that's hard to answer. Uh, I know the right answer, Pastor. I do too. I know what I'm supposed to say. But how do we live our lives? How do we how do we how do we make our decisions? Do we make them on based on what people will think or what God thinks? How do we make our decisions? Hey, we humble ourselves. And relate to God right. You know what? We'll make a decision to please Him. And not worry about what people think. And we'll humble ourselves. We'll realize we don't have to be right all the time. We realize that we need God's mercy. We need God's forgiveness. We need His grace. Just as much as those other people. You know... We can't be sure because, of course, Jesus ended it. But this is a logical conclusion. That tax collector, how do you think he related to other people? Do you think he related to other people in self-righteousness? Or in humility? I think he related to everyone else. What did Jesus say? He or she, who's 
to begin with much? They love much. If we realize how much God has forgiven us, how much He's forgiven us, how much He always forgets, how much mercy He extends to us, when we realize the truth, God, that, you know what? We'll extend that same mercy, that same forgiveness, that same understanding, that same humility to others. So as we have communion this morning, this do in remembrance of me, Jesus said. I want you to remember this. Our Lord Jesus Christ was a humble man. Church, let me say that again. And I expect an amen from you. Our Lord Jesus Christ was a humble servant and man. Amen. He humbled himself. Philippians chapter 2. He was obedient and humbled himself even to point of death, even the death of the cross. He humbled. I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. And the conviction that I feel Conviction, oftentimes, of my self righteousness. And how sometimes I relate to others in a way that's not pleasing to God. Oh, Pastor, what have you done? Hey, I'm not saying this in action, listen to me. How I feel. He spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Who are the others? Be careful what we think. We're not, we're not, we're not for the grace of God. There it goes. We're not for the grace of God. Let's humble our humble ourselves. I want you to bow your heads. Jason, everybody, just, just stay in your pew. I just want everybody to bow your head. And I want you to focus and think about, Lord, who's the others? Who's the others?
We remember that this morning. And oh God, we pray, please, help us to be in a right relationship with you. And Lord, be in a right relationship with others. Relate well with others. And I'll always be ready to give a defense for the hope that is within us. With meekness and fear. Meekness and fear. Not arrogance and pride and self-righteousness, but meekness and fear. Knowing that we need your mercy. We need your grace. We need your forgiveness. Who are we? Without Christ, we are nothing. Without Christ, we are hopeless. Without Christ, we are damned. We're just sharing that good news with other people who will listen. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. If God perhaps will grant them mercy. To escape the snare of the devil. For they've been taken captive by him to do his will, oh God. Oh Lord, please help us. To take communion in a right way and reverently. So thankful for your mercy. Remembering your humility, Lord Jesus. We pray we would extend that same humility to others. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.